Um, so today we are gonna be solving systems, but word problems. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tell you what I always tell you. Get you a pencil, get you a paper, so you can take some notes because I already know math, okay? But you need to know that you know math. Let's go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Example number one. So a company that manufactures sneakers has a fixed cost of $300,000. Additionally, it costs $30 to produce each pair of shoes. They are sold at $80 a pair. Write a function that represents the cost of making the sneakers. Part A. Part B. Write a function that represents the revenue from each pair of sneakers. Part C. Determine the break-even point and describe what it means. Wow. Okay, so we're going to start with part A, obviously, because we're going to go in ABC order. So write a function that represents the cost of making the sneakers. Okay, so a company that manufactures sneakers, so that means a company that makes sneakers, we're matching those up, has a fixed cost of $30,000. That's important, 300,000, 30,000, 300,000. Additionally, it costs $30 to produce each pair of shoes. So, I know that that 300,000 is important. I also know that the word additionally is important. I know that the $30 is important and the each is important, okay? So the $300,000 is a fixed cost, so that's gonna be a constant. And then additionally tells me I'm gonna add, and then $30 each pair, that tells me to multiply, 30X. So that's my function. Bada bing, bada boom. Just that easy, baby. So that's part A. So now let's do part B. Write a function that represents the revenue. So how much money you're making. That's what the word revenue makes. I mean, that's what the word revenue means. How much money you're making. Write a function that represents the revenue from each pair of sneakers. So it tells me that the sneakers are sold at $80 per pair. Okay? So that means $80 per pair. Okay? $80 each. Per means to multiply, so that's 80x. It didn't say a fixed cost, so there's no constant um, involved in there, so that's my function, right there, just like that. Okay, so then part C, part C is the hard part. It says, determine the break-even point and describe what it means, okay? So I had the two functions, which is C, and then I had R. C is the cost, and then R was the revenue. Um, and I wanna find the break-even point. So I'm setting them equal to each other, equal, even. Ta-da! So I set the lavender, the purple part, equal to the pink part, right? 300,000 plus 30x equals 80x. And now, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to solve for x. So easy, right? So when I do that, I'm going to do uh, get both variables. I can't talk. Both variables on the same side, minus 30, minus 30 on both sides. So that's going to give me 300,000 equals 50x. So once I get that, then I gotta solve for x, so I'm gonna get rid of that 50 by dividing. Divide by 50, divide by 50. I'm gonna get 6,000 equals x. Well, now that I have the x, because remember it's a system, so once I get one variable, what do I do to get the other variable? Plug it back in. So I'm gonna choose one of the originals, so I could choose c or r. Which one are you gonna choose? Which one looks easier? Obviously r, right? So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna plug 80 times 6,000. I'm gonna get 480 thousand my goodness so my answer is six thousand comma four hundred and eighty thousand this is what we call the break-even point so it asked us to find what the break-even point was and then it asked us to describe the meaning of the break-even point what does that mean like what is the break-even point so the break-even point is when the company makes as much money as it spent as it put into creating the company, right? So the company will break even, make as much money as it spent when they make 6,000 pairs of shoes and that 6,000 pairs of shoes will make them $480,000. It's at that point where they're gonna be even. So after selling 6,000 pairs, then the company will become profitable, AKA make money. This is how businesses work. You invest in the business, pour your own money into there, and then you gotta sell, 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 sell to make up the money that you invested. And then once you make up the money that you invested, then you start being profitable. 
Nobody tells you that, but that's real business. That's real, it's real money right there, okay? That's how a lot of companies get started. Okay, example number two. So the next couple of examples are the same process, same, they're all break-even problems. Um, the last two are a little different. An entrepreneur is opening a studio. It takes $18,000 to start up the business. Also, a session costs $20 for the studio to produce. The entrepreneur hosts sessions at $80 a session. So let's say you're trying to start a business, right? You're trying to open up a studio, and it's, you know you, you planned out all the costs, and it's gonna take you $18,000 to start that studio, you know? Um, you gotta buy stuff, you gotta rent a space, all that stuff. Each session, every time somebody does a session at your studio, it costs you $20 to maintain that session, right? Um, so, number uh, part A, number A, um, write a function that represents the cost of launching the studio and hosting sessions. Part B, write a function that represents the revenue from each studio session. And then part C, determine the break even point and describe what it means. So part A, uh, describe the, or write a function. So the cost is definitely gonna be $18,000, that's a fixed cost, and then $20 per session. So just like the last problem, C of X equals 18,000 plus 20 per session, easy. Part B, write the function that represents the revenue from each studio session. Uh, each session costs $80, so that's your revenue, that's what you're making. Every time somebody um, uses your studio, they pay you $80 for that hour, for that session. So R of X equals 80X. Okay, so determine the break even point. So I have C, my C function, and I have my R function. For them to be even, I gotta set them equal to each other. And then I'm gonna solve for X. Just like last time, minus 20, minus 20. I'm gonna get 60. I'm gonna divide by 60 on both sides. I'm gonna get X equals 300. So that's 300 sessions. Um, and then I'm gonna plug that 300 into one of my original equations. So which one are you gonna choose, C or R? Which one looks easier? Obviously R. So when I do that, I'm gonna get 80 times 300, and that's gonna give me 24,000. So my break-even point is 300 comma 24,000. Okay, so we have to describe the meaning of that break-even point. Well, I know that 300 is the sessions. 24,000 is 300 is the sessions, 24,000 is revenue. So it's gonna take 300 studio sessions and making $24,000 for me to break even, which means to get back the money that I put into the company, to make as much as I spent. After 300 sessions, then I will become profitable, AKA make money for this studio. So all of you future music producers out there, this is the kind of stuff that you gotta figure out, how much money you're gonna save so that you can start your studio. Okay, example number three, same, it's the same stuff guys, okay, just different situations an influencer launches a youtube channel each youtube video costs them a hundred dollars to get edited and the recording equipment is gonna and startup cost is gonna cost them 10 g's 10 stacks 10 bands whatever we're calling them these days okay um and each video makes them when once all that's done each video is gonna make them about 300 dollars. okay i hope youtubers are making more than that <laughs> anyway so it says write a function uh, that represents the cost of launching the channel. B, write a function that represents the revenue from each video. And then C, determine the break even point and describe what it means, okay? Same things. So for the channel, it's gonna, how much money is he, are, is he or she putting up front? He's putting 10, he or she is putting $10,000, right? And then each session, um, each video, I should say, is $100. So that's 10 stacks, 10 bands, plus $100 times X, right? Because 10,000 is the fixed amount, and then 100 is per video. Write a function, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Part B, write a function that represents the revenue. So every time they make a video, each video gives them $300. So 300 times X, so easy. Part C, determine the break even point and describe what it means, right? So I have two functions, 100 plus, uh, 10,000 plus 100X and then 300X. For them to be even, they need to be equal to each other. So then I solve for X, doop, doop, doop. Hey, 
I'm gonna subtract 100, subtract 100 from both sides. Uh, I'm gonna get 10,000 equals 200x. I'm gonna divide both sides by 200. I'm gonna get 50 equals x. What do I do with that 50? Y'all already know you plug it in. Which function, pink or purple, C or R, whichever one looks easier for you. R, thank you. 300 times 50, 15,000. Look at you. So the break-even point is 50 comma 15,000. That's my break-even point. We love, love, love to see it. Okay? So now I'm going to describe that. Describe the meaning of the break-even point. What's 50 going to be? The, the influencer will break even, make as much money as they spent when they make 50 videos. And by making $15,000. Okay? So after making videos, they will become profitable, a.k.a. make money. Okay? So if they're making one video a week, that's almost going to take a year to become profitable, which is realistic for a business, okay? Most businesses do not become profitable until after the first year. So my future business owners, just so you know, that's what's up, okay? Um, example number four. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears. So you definitely need to know how to do a break-even problem. So that's why we did three examples of break-even problems, but systems don't just come in that format. We have some other formats, okay? So JPT is selling step show tickets and one on day one, the step team sells three adult tickets and nine student tickets for $75, okay? On the second day, the step team sells eight adult tickets and five student tickets for a total of $67. How much money, how much is each adult ticket and how much is each student ticket? Let adult tickets be X and student tickets be Y. So, three adult tickets and nine student tickets for $75. 3X plus 9Y equals 75. That's so easy, right? So that's an obvious equation because it tells you a total already and a total of $75, bada bing, bada boom. On the second day, the step team sells eight adult tickets and five student tickets for a total of $67. So 8X plus 5Y equals 67. So easy. So now I'm gonna solve this um, by elimination. So I'm gonna multiply by eight on the top 888 and I'm gonna multiply by negative 3 on the bottom so that I can cancel out my X's right but negative 3 because if I'm gonna have a positive number on the top the bottom number needs to be a negative number so that they cancel each other out right so boop 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 there we go so I'm gonna get 24 plus 72 Y equals 600 and I'm gonna get negative 24 minus 15 Y equals negative 201 this is what I want I want a positive and a negative so that I can strike them out Okay, I'm eliminating, that's why I call it elimination, eliminating one of the variables, okay? So I have a positive 24, a negative 24, those go away, I, li I like that, okay? And then that's gonna give me 57y, because 72 minus 15 is 57, equals 399, because 600 minus 201 is 399. I'm gonna divide by 57, y equals 7. You see what we did there? We did that, okay? So now I'm gonna take that seven and I'm gonna plug it into one of my equations. I'm gonna choose the blue one because between the blue and the pink, neither of them really looks easier than the other, so it doesn't matter. So I have Y, so I have to plug it in for Y. The last three examples, we always found X first and we plugged it in for X. Make sure you pay attention. So I did three X plus nine times seven equals 75. So three X plus 63 equals 75, minus 63 on both sides. I get three X equals 12. Divide by three on both sides, I'm gonna get X equals four. So remember it says, let adult tickets be X, let student tickets be Y. So that means adult tickets are $4 and student tickets are $7. You see what we did there? Yes. Okay. I know you're like, this is so much. Example number five. <laughs> Here's example five, okay. You went shopping and spent $131. Um, yes, jeans cost you $28, shirts cost you $15. You bought a total of seven items. How many jeans did you get and how many shirts did you buy? Okay, so jeans cost you 28 and shirts cost you 15. And you spent 131. The equation is 28X plus 15Y equals 131. I always say money equals money. So all the money should go together. Okay, um, you bought a total of seven items. 
okay that's my next total so the first total was 131 you spent a total 131 so that has to, the first equation has to be equal to 131 the second equation has to be equal to 7 because it says you bought a total of seven items but what items did you buy you bought jeans and you bought shirts jeans are X shirts are Y so now I have to use elimination right I'm gonna go ahead and use my elimination so I'm gonna turn the bottom variable X into a negative 28 so that they cancel out a negative 28 so that they cancel out a negative 28 so that they cancel out so that means I have to multiply everything in the bottom by negative 28 the blue equation stays the same the ne the pink equation turns into negative 28 minus 28 equals negative 196 hey so what happens to the 28 and the negative 28 they get out of here and then I have negative 13 equals negative 65 I divide divide y equals 5 so I'm gonna plug that five into one of the equations. Um, obviously, I'm gonna choose the pink one in this case because the pink one is the simplest one. Um, so X plus Y instead of Y, I'm gonna use five. And then I'm gonna solve for X by, I'm gonna get X equals two. So it said, let the jeans be X and let the shirts be Y. So, ooh, how many, <laughs> how many jeans did I buy? Two pairs of jeans, how many shirts did I buy? Um, Five. Last example. Um, uh, in your pocket, you have 17 coins. So you just reached in your pocket and you were like, ooh, change. Um, the coins are all nickels and dimes. So you only have nickels, you only have dimes. There's a total of $1.35 in your pocket. How many nickels and how many dimes do you have? Okay, let X be nickels, let uh, dimes be Y. <coughs> First of all, you have 17 coins. So nickels plus dimes equals 17. X plus Y equals 17. You have a total of $1.35, okay? So I know that nickels are five cents, so 0 0.05 X plus dimes are 10 cents, 0 0.10 Y equals my total of $1.35. So you're, I know you're like, whoa, where did these equations come from? Miss Brunat, you have to look for totals, okay? It tells you you have a total of 17 uh, coins. What kind of coins? Nickels and dimes, X plus Y. That's how I figured out the first equation. The second equation says, that I had a total of $1.35. Now, because that total is money, <coughs> I have to represent the coefficients of the variable X and Y with money. That's how I knew what to do there. So five cents is a nickel, 10 cents is a dime. That's how I knew to use those coefficients. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to eliminate. Oh, I didn't show you that equation. My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, so the I'm gonna change the top equation for the X to be negative five cents. So I'm gonna multiply everything by negative five cents, okay? And when I do that, I'm gonna get negative five cents X minus five cents Y um, equals negative 85 cents. On the bottom, the equation, the pink equation stays the same. Um, the negative, five cents and the positive five cents are gonna cancel out. And then I have negative five cents plus 10 cents. So that's gonna be positive five cents and then negative 85 minus a dollar, I mean, yeah, negative 85 cents plus a dollar 35 equals 50 cents. Uh, so then I'm gonna divide by five cents, divide by five cents, y equals 10. Yay. So I'm gonna plug in 10, I'm gonna plug it into the top equation, x plus 10 equals 17. And then uh, I'm gonna subtract 10, subtract 10, x equals seven. So you have seven nickels and 10 dimes. Yay! 
that's it guys those are in a nutshell yeah you okay uh, I will go back see if you could do the examples without my help and if not I'll see you in the next one